So today we're discussing more training than anything else, just because it's a little bit, it was shorter topic, but obviously training needs to be covered, nutrition, mindset, everything, as a separate entity to become the best version of yourself and present that to the world, which obviously we're trying to do. Because it's, you have one life and you have to live it well. And a lot of guys are just not doing, you know, we look around at the average guy these days, they're not in shape, they don't take good care of themselves, and it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be a bodybuilder, but it's just, are you actually like a fit, healthy individual? Because you struggle to see them. You, know, you look around in the street these days, you don't see many just fit, healthy men. Most are overweight, not with a life together, they're like an emotional child, like we've covered a lot, a lot of these bits. But a lot comes into is physical fitness. Are you pushing your body to be better, stronger, fitter, faster? Or at least a good, maintain a good level if you've got there. And most people are not. And it's, it's an essential part of being a human being. We've got to move, we've got to use our body. Because we see this when we don't, and you see it's so stiff and so, and so uncomfortable. So just generally moving your body. And, and obviously, we've all got to focus on weight training, but it's different styles. And it's not necessarily saying that any style is better than the other. The main thing that we'll work through now is just finding, finding what suits you the best. Have you jump on this? No, the slideshow. So the slideshow is very short. So anyway, like I said, it's, it's more talking. Dominating 2024, my Instagram and YouTube, as always. But what's our best training styles? So we've got the bro split, where it would be training every single body part separately. So you've got chest day, shoulder day, arm day. Push pull legs. I'm sure most of you guys have heard that by now. Maybe you tried it yourself. So it would be push pull legs. So we'd do push would be your chest, shoulders, triceps. It's push back is back and biceps would be pull. So anything that's kind of these pulling movements and legs, obviously self explanatory. And if we're doing that, we'd often program it as one one time through and then a day off, or maybe two day, two days on one day off. It depends on someone's schedule really. But it's the same with a lot of these upper lower split. You know, would, that, would we potentially use that? I'd say most of you guys have probably been training for a long enough now that the volume required to get a stimulus in, if you're doing upper lower, would take like a two hour session. So it's usually counterproductive and you're better adding a fifth session, splitting things up further to be able to not have to just spend so much downtime in the gym and probably get tired. I noticed when I've done those splits, I'm there for so long, I just get tired and bored. And it'll be the same for most of you guys where you know, no, this, this isn't the style that I'm enjoying. But it's finding this is another one full body session would be even more so. I'd, I'd program them just for a beginner because they do still have their place. But if, if you're trying to hit everything again, the, the amount of stimulus we do per body part, you just won't be able to do it in a full body session. You'd be doing everything in one session, you'd be there hours and hours and hours. But again, when you start to split it up across the week, you can perform better in each part and then stimulate the muscles better every time as well. And then we go. Would high intensity training or high volume training be better? There's always a debate there. So some of the guys you'll see do like five sets and five exercises, but they never quite go to failure. They're like just short of failure. And then that was high volume training. So they do mo on paper, it looks like they're doing loads and loads of work. And there's just a lot of reps and a lot of blood flow and things like that, which still has its place in bodybuilding and physique development. But then we've got the high intensity training, not HIIT, it's just HIIT. But high intensity training like Dorian Yates and a few of the other guys like that used to use. And that was less frequent, so they'd do maybe, maybe some weeks, three sessions a week. But they were so intense because they used to do push pull legs most of the time. So intense. If you had to watch their sets, not a massive amount of sets, but the intensity is like screaming like you got a gun to your head trying to get that level of performance out of you. But some people just don't even like to train that way. So that, that style would not work for some people because they'll just hate it. They don't want to get like amped up and like that. And, and also, I've seen it all the time. Obviously, we do need to train harder and we learn to train harder. But at first, the higher volume would suit better. You know, if you're a little bit early in your training age, you've not trained with people who are a bit mental at that, at that stage. It, was, it takes us people with a bit of a screw loose to scream at you and push you to a point that is not normal. It's beyond normal when you're going to that level. You know, if you watch all the videos of Don Yates, it's absolutely fucking insane. But it's understanding that if you like that kind of training, his old training partner still trains like that. Dorian doesn't. So he probably, he did, he did it because it was required to get the best out of his physique. His training partner just fucking loves it and he still does it to this day. So yes, Dorian got better results because he was pushing it at the time. But the training partner <laughs> is actually loving what he's doing. So at 50 odd years old, he still has a muscle, he still has a physique and everything else because he loved what he was doing. And that's the most important part 
and it's what keeps me in the gym. I, I just enjoy, I just like to train. I like to move my body and feel physically capable. And that people say, like, if, would you need a goal or a show or something? Well, the goal is just to go in every time and have a great workout. That is still a goal. I want, I want to have a great fucking workout. And I want to maintain over time as well. It's still something people often overlook. The last one is during volume training. During volume training would be 10 sets of 10. Or something like that. So you, you probably go in and do, you probably five or six reps short of failure. And then you, go, you rest and go again. And then eventually you actually start to hit failure in the last few sets. But you've done so much volume to get to a place of actual stimulating muscle. I always argue that during volume training is a bit of a, the, the first five sets are a bit of a waste of time. They essentially loads and loads of warm ups, but don't need to really be there. Once you're warmed up, it's like just skip it and go straight to the work and stuff. And you'll get a far better result. And then it's putting it all together. You just decide which one is better out of all those. We'd want a mixture. So if you're programming it, we'd want a mixture. So we're hitting everything evenly. We enjoy what we're doing. We want a, a degree of high intensity stuff. Maybe some big compound lifts. We go a, a low rep range, really push hard. Maybe do some intensifiers as well. But then we also want to add some volume stuff in there. I know Pete's been training with me on a, on a Wednesday. We've done 20 or 30 rep sets sometimes and it's ah, like your whole legs are quivering everywhere and stuff. But that's like the last set on a leg press that's a bit more stable. So you wouldn't do it on like a barbell squat. Right at the end, on the leg press, we go in and, and you can go because it's safe and it's locked in to the point that you can't move anymore and you've got spotters and they're pulling the weights off and they're pushing it. And that's true, really high intensity training. But it kills us every time we do it. So if you're doing every session like that as well, it's understanding that there's a lot of recovery demands needed. And you probably have to take more frequent breaks from training. So... All that has to be factored in when we're trying to put our own training plan together. And this is what makes it hard, and obviously gives me a job as a coach. It's the same thing with the exercise order. To know this stuff is just something that comes over time. But the main thing is starting to understand your body and what it needs, and also what you like, what you enjoy. If you do something, you just love it. Well, that's something you're going to stick to, so that's the first thing you need to find. Because if it's torture from day one, I know Pete, you hate me all the time anyway, but... <laughs> If it's torture from day one, you, you, you struggle. Whereas, you know, we've actually made it fun. And I, I, I keep referencing to Pete because it, me and him and Jasper train on a Wednesday. We used to train these guys. And then since I moved everything online to, to be able to reach more men like we are doing now, we train together on a Wednesday. And we've actually had better workouts ever since. Because we're sort of pushing each other. And everyone's stepped up the game a lot, even myself. Training with all these guys. It's like, well, I, I can't not put the work in because I've got two clients. They're trying to chase me. They're trying to push each other. It's like it just works in a three-dimensional way to get the best out of people. And even when we're not really feeling it, one of us has always got energy enough that we actually really have a good time. We always leave there feeling better. And I've been guilty of bringing the shit out of you sometimes, and the guys will pick me up. And that's another part of something we enjoy. Can we find a good trainer partner or trainer partners? We meet up at the gym, a group of good men, which we discussed on day one. Let's come to the gym, and we have a great workout together. And it is a real bonding experience where you're really pushing each other, and you're having a laugh all the way through, and it's... It makes the whole thing just effortless. And you're getting pushed harder as well. So if you can find that and you put it together, you'll have much better workouts. It's something that we found personally as well. So fantastic. And the next point, what order we put the exercises in? So if you were you were saying, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to write a training plan. So I'm going to do, uh, I want to do a push-pull leg split. So I'm going to do a push session on a Monday, for example. Probably a bad choice because most gyms are really busy on a Monday in, a, in that setting. But if you were, say, okay, would I go with compound exercises first, like bench press? Or would I put an isolation exercise first, like a pec fly? And there isn't a right or wrong answer. This is the problem where people struggle. Some people will say they prefer to do their compound lifts first. Some people, isolation work first. Because the isolation work would get a full contraction of the muscle. If we're doing pec flies, as an example, full contraction of that muscle is getting fully short and contracted. So then when we go to compounds, we won't be as strong, but that muscle's fired up and it's really going to work hard so we could get a great stimulus. However, if we put the isolation stuff at the end, I always feel you don't get much out of it, personally, because especially on chest, you, you have, you're not able to get that full contraction. But then you put the heavy compound stuff first. So now you get that stimulus from the heavier weight, which you wouldn't have if the isolation exercise went first because you'd be a bit, a bit tired. So you achieve it. It's an arguably similar result. It gets really into splitting hairs and how hard you do the exercise and things like that. So ultimately, with this, it's very confusing for you guys if you can program on your own because there isn't a right or wrong answer. The main thing that I've seen is 
like for my own when I've done it myself and then I've put clients through sessions and gone, that session shit needs to, the order needs to change. It's more if I see a drop in performance. So for example, if we did compound, 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 example being bench press, incline dumbbell press, shoulder press. I often see that you, you get a, a, a drop in performance because this area is just getting tired. So the weight you're using on the shoulder press is so low that it's not getting as much stimulus. However, if we then threw in an isolation exercise, so we'd go maybe a flat chest, incline chest, starting to get tired, rest this area by doing a side lateral, which is using all the muscles not involved, and then we could put to shoulder press and perform better. And then I'd put triceps at the end, because if I put triceps at the start, even if you're trying to work that area, it will take away from the, the performance on everything else so much that now you can't press at all, now you're using some shit weight, there's no stimulus to the muscle. So it's really just understanding that of that if we if we try and do too much at the start, we won't be able to get much at the end. And um, I think a lot of people just don't really know where to put each each bit of the exercises to get the most out of training. And they get over over consumed with it. But if we follow a baseline formula, we're usually okay. And say, so do we do low reps first? So we do the heavier stuff and then the lighter stuff later. I'd say yes if that's the case, unless it's something like legs and you've got knee problems. You'd want to do the higher rep stuff first because then it warms your knees up before going into heavier stuff. And ideally, then it would reduce the load on the heavier exercises. So then you're not putting the same stress through the, through the joints, which are going to be potentially worn away. Like I've now trained for 19 years, so my joints are a bit battered from my knees at this point. So I've got to be careful. I'm going to make sure I really warm up well. I'd never go straight into high, 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 high weight, low rep stuff. I've always have to do a lot of warm ups, and we've seen again on the Wednesday session for legs. Uh, sometimes, if we've not done leg extension, I've not, I've not done as much warm ups. I've gone into hack squat, I'm like, ah, oh, no, my, my knee straight away. My knee starts to twinge, and it's like, it's not, it's not worth putting yourself out for training. And you've got to be a bit more smart. If you're 21, it doesn't really matter. When you get to like 31, I'm 35 now. You start to feel these things, and, and it's making sure that, okay, you probably are better sometimes to go slightly higher reps first before going heavy on that first exercise at least to make sure you're fully warm. And then do, would we put big muscles first? Again, if you're saying like a push session, could we put a side lateral first? Which I'd say yes. If we were trying to build those delts up, you could put side laterals first as a way to warm up almost, and then do a different type of side lateral later, because then you get double volume to the shoulder. But I do that as a, as a way to warm up. And then for legs, you could go leg extensions first, leg curls first, Again, way to warm up, so we don't almost use it as priming exercises, but not uh, going to be exhausting ourselves too much. So if we're using the small muscles first, I would prefer that for most people. So it's starting off a pull session with rear delt flies, starting off a push session with side delts, and just these little muscles that often get neglected, which for me were never kept up with the rest of my physique. And this is why I'd say a lot of people, we, we probably all want bigger shoulders, I think that's fair to say. Um, we all want bigger arms. So it's where to replace them. I'd say delt stuff at the start of a session, and then you could put it back in midway through to get extra volume if you really want to bring the, the size up and the struggling. Arms always do it at the end because it's sort of like if I weaken this, I can't do anything. So I can't pull, I can't push. So I need to make sure that's strong first. So it's the only thing I'd always do at the end. Because even stuff like calves, you could do calves at the start if you wanted to, as again, a warm up exercise. And we can see how complicated this would be. Like, there's kind of a yes and no for every single thing. And that's why I wanted to put it on here today. Just point it out and say, if you guys don't know, it's, it is very confusing when it's explained in its full depth. Because there's no, there's no right or wrong in the conclusion. They all have the place. Uh, and this is why we program and adjust things over time in the way that we do as a coach. Because it just comes with time with practice. So you guys can learn to do it yourselves with practice. It's just trying things out and really being aware of, okay, what's my body feeling? I feel sort of like internally uh, aware of what, what's going on with your body, which is the same for every single thing we've covered so far. What you feel when you eat something, what you're feeling just generally in your emotions and yourself, like all this is really important, that self-awareness to say, what am I feeling? Because otherwise, how the hell do you know what to do for yourself to improve and feel better and feel your best self? If you, if you don't even know what's wrong in the first place because you're so unaware, which most people are. You don't know if they're not intol if they're intolerant to food. You don't know if like, a pain in the muscle is a pain in the knee joint. Two very different things. Pain in the muscle because you're doing loads of reps, good thing. Pain in the knee joint, like a knife going in, bad thing. <laughs> it's always a bad thing. 
And it's, some people don't even know that difference. And that's like a basic. So we really have to be on top of how we feel to make sure that all this stuff is in the right place. But like I say, guys, obviously this does it, does it confusing. So that's why I said I have a job in the first place. <laughs> to help you guys understand this in, in a one-to-one -one setting, much better. So how, how often will we change training plans? Two to four weeks, four to six, six to 12, 12 plus. When you get bored, when progress stops, conclusion, it's the same thing. Um, they, they all have the place. So some people, you know, if, we, if the training plan we put together is shit, there's no point in doing it longer than two weeks because it's not getting anywhere. However, some people will say, it's not, I've not got anywhere in two weeks, I'm gonna change. When actually, what I've seen most of the time is they're not performing it very well. So they're not seeing results after two weeks. You wouldn't, because no training plan will. And then you see them swap and swap and swap and swap and swap, because they're looking for this magical answer. And the answer is, every single thing performed well, you'll get a result. So it's how I can train with two of my clients, and it might be the odd, odd set I do extra, but the most of it is the fact that if you look at my, my sets after 19 years of training, just perform differently. Do much more practice, able to really be precise and hit everything properly. And we can do the same sessions because they're just well-rounded sessions. If we were overly specializing on something that's specific to one person, for example, if you had a, I don't know, small arms, you're trying to bring your arms up and your training partner has massive arms, then it's not gonna align very well. But if you both have similar physique goals, then your training could completely align. Um, getting bored is another big thing if you know if you start to get bored of a training plan if you're someone who doesn't and then you just want to go i'm going to log log it all and i'm going to progress it for six months 12 months you know dorian yates again was famous for the fact he kept the same training plan for years and he just was happy to go in and like groundhog day because it was the routine that he thrived on so much so if you're not bored and you're going in you're actually still getting results because you're, you're enjoying the sessions and your goal each time is on a great session then it could be six months longer before you change the training plan. Mine changed the, le the least frequent out of all, everyone. So all the clients I change more frequently than mine. And theirs are still not that frequent because the main thing is get me some videos. I need to see how you're doing the sessions before we start looking at the session design. We need to make sure the se session execution is in the right place as well. But when progress, obviously another great one as well, obviously. If you're not, if you're not moving forward with something and you're aiming to move forward, that would be a good time to change the training plan. But it doesn't necessarily always change. You know, a lot of you guys, when we came back from lockdown, back into normal world, I was like, okay, which exercise did you want to get rid of? Which exercise did you love? Let's keep the, let's get rid of the shit ones, like triple, triple drop sets on hack squat, uh, split squats, which I know Jake did. You know, we had the dumbbells and we were doing like three drop sets because it was the only way we could create a stimulus with minimal weight at home. And then we go back to the gym and now we can load the leg press up and load the hack squat up and we've got all this other stuff. So we dropped that and put some of the fun stuff back in that we've not been able to do. And that was a big part of it. It's like, it's a training that was fun. <laughs> yeah. and, and that always going to get the best result. So, guys, that's pretty much, the, I mean, that's kind of discussing overview of training and how you program. But I know a lot of people don't know that stuff. I've never explained that really to anyone. I know most people don't explain it. So hopefully that's give you a better understanding, not just confuse the life out of you even more. Because it can be both. It can be both. Obviously, like I said, it's just a time thing more than anything. So how you how you're able to understand what your body needs, when do we need to change training and everything else. Because a lot of it is also internally. What, what am I feeling? Am I bored of my fucking training? Do I go to the gym or not? Are you excited to go into the gym because you've got your training plan that you love to do and you love that session and you find it really enjoyable? You know, these are all factors that people don't tend to think about. I have to think about for you guys and explain to you, but they're really important things to, to note down as well. Uh, I just need to get to my light. Just to show you guys how we actually program it then. Can you, can you guys still see the screen? The sharing? No, we can see you now. I'll just share, I'll share. Yeah, no slides, just yourself. I'll share that to a second. I'm just going to find my own. So I've got my own progress tracker, which was a Google Sheet. So I'll just open this for you guys. Obviously, we went through some of it yesterday. Uh, sorry, day before. We just went day before. So, let's finish off in here. So, if we're doing the training, so I'll just stick to this one today. Obviously, there's other bits for the next next few workshops. But, the training side of things, 
it, like I said, a push session. So my push sessions, when I la this was the last time I programmed on a Google Sheet, I use the app now, so we don't have to use this anymore. But it's just to show you guys and to give you an example of this, so you can mess around with the sheet and you can make changes and stuff when we've, when we've gone through at the end. So if you guys want to use this as a template to help program your own stuff, you're more than welcome to do that. But some guys actually sell these templates and they'll, they'll get someone to design it and then just they'll sell it to people. It's like, here's a, like a trait, basically like a log, don't know if you were selling log books? Like, um, if you had a, that's, that's some people, apparel and stuff like that. Some people sell log books, some people sell Google Sheets now. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to kind of give it to you guys instead. And I can leave all mine on here because there's a few examples of our different training plans that you could just use, repurpose. And if, it, if it fits your goals, then crack on with it. But obviously this one, like I said, push pull legs up or lower, which is the way I like to program it. It's five days. So we're hitting everything twice. So we've got a push pull legs, and then we've got a full upper body session, full lower body session. So we've got legs twice. Mm. Um, and that's a really good way to, that I found when I was doing push pull legs, push pull legs rest, it kicked my ass so hard. So we're just taking one session away and having one more rest day in the middle. So I'm much better across the week. Even though the session's still quite long, it was just a, that extra rest for the extra day made a massive difference. But how would I program it as well? So this was how we used to do it back in the day when it was on here. So the, we've got the baseline structure, which is what I was saying before. So a flat press variation, which would be bench press, dumbbell press, machine press, anything in this sort of plane. And then if we go, so I put machine press on here because it was a machine press going straight. Then an incline press variation. So I'll put dumbbell press for this one, but that could be dumbbell press, Smith machine press. And we get the hang of it. We're just kind of going for these movement patterns instead. Because then I think, well, if I'm not in my gym, but I'm in another gym, like now, right now I'm going to the gym in Tulum, and I'm going, right, I can still follow this same structure in this gym and say, right, well, what, what have I got that's a flat, flat pressing movement? What have I got that's an incline pressing movement? What have I got that's a side down movement? And we start looking through the options, and that's why it's so important to teach you guys. It's what, essentially what I learned from training people on the gym floor at peak time, because you, you can't always get on the exercise you want when you train at peak time. So if you guys train at peak time, you're also used to this, it's either you sit and wait, and it could be 10 minutes, or you have to potentially find a variation, think on your feet, to change it really quickly. Because I mean, ideally, we could just be in a gym where we're not having to do that, but most of us are not. We're in gyms where we're working on other people, and sometimes that means we've got to compromise on the exercise, unfortunately. Or we sit there and wait for 20 minutes, and we've gone cold, and we've kind of lost our motivation. So like I said, I'd normally go flat press, incline press, and I sometimes even superset that, which is why I've got these both as wide, with a side lateral. Because I could do those straight away. If the cuffs are not next to me, I can get the dumbbells up, press the dumbbells, put them down, get in the cuffs, and go cuff side laterals. And that's a really easy way to save some time for you guys who are a bit short on the time. You can throw things like that together because they don't hinder each other. We've got one coming here, one coming off the side. And that's a way I find it to make things more efficient if we can speed things up. Say if we're going biceps or triceps together, we can just speed things up, leg extensions, leg curls, doing supersets back and forth. So a good way to intensify things, but also a good way to save time. Because most of us aren't, we're not professional athletes, we have loads of time in the world. We're still trying to train, watching the clock most of the time. It's really important to know just how much time we've, we're taking up and try and reduce that. And then, like I said, we've gone from the, the incline press, I've got a slight rest with the side lateral, then I've gone to the shoulder press straight up. So we've got plate loaded shoulder press. Most gyms have one. If they don't, I could grab a pair of dumbbells or a barbell if that's comfortable. A lot of people struggle with a barbell, though. Dumbbell's probably a better option. So then you can go there, Smith machine, barbells, dumbbells, machines, loads of different options just to hit this vertical vertical press pattern. And you can see how this, this could be applied in even a pure gym. You, know, you could go to, I don't know, uh, Muscle Works Opington or Ultraflex in Leeds where they've got 20, 30 chest press machines that are all different angles and stuff. Or you could go to pure gym where they've got one and you could still apply the same framework. I'd say the best thing is when you go to the gyms that are really well equipped, play on some of the kit, like a big kid. I haven't been in Toys R Us as a kid, as an adult. And you can just go on and go, oh my God, this feels great. Take note of what it is. Because this is how I learned all the time. It was like going to my ultra flex and going, what the fuck do we go on? And just kind of taking note. And then you remember the machines and go, oh yeah, I've used that one at the other gym. I noted it down. And then you can actually start to potentially step out of a gym that you maybe see you did start a pure gym. You graduate from pure gym to be able to go on to these other ones and it's step by step yeah it just gives you a lot a lot more uh, of a hard training environment as well so it's much better for you to to do that 
And like I say, you can go straight down this. So you've got shoulder press variation, dip variation, and the tricep tension variation. Or we keep the straight bars in every single gym in the fucking country. Or a rope, or we get two ropes, or some sort of extension variation, some sort of dip variation, like an assisted dip machine, a free weight weight dip, a bench weight dip, an actual machine that dips. Like, there's always going to be options in gyms. So we can, we can vary that stuff as well. So it's, it's, it's just how we can change things. And I know, obviously, it's probably is a, it's a little bit boring as I'm saying it and to you guys because it's just programming. But ultimately, if we know this, we can adjust our goals as and when. You know, I've got one of the clients there now who said, I want, really want to bring my chest up. They said, we're going to go for a chest sort of speciality block where that's the focus three days a week and everything else is sort of maintaining around it. So we pull volume further else and put extra stuff on the chest. And that's some way we can grow specific muscles just because you're putting more of your recovery demands in that area, more of your energy in that area, and, and then letting everything else slow down a little bit. And it, again, it's something that people don't realize. We can specialize in certain areas to try and bring them up. You know, a lot of guys come to me and say, my legs are weak because they've neglected them over time. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to train the legs a little bit harder than the rest. Let that come down, then go a little bit harder. And it will slowly start to balance back out. We'll get that proportion back. But it makes sense that most people don't, don't know we can do that. But this is the more advanced sides of programming. Before we started going, you know, if, if you had a really well-equipped gym and we start then talking about resistance profiles and how we can adjust our machines, which gets really fucking boring. That's why I don't ever talk about it. Uh, and because it's, it, for most people, it's not relevant. We don't even have access to those machines. So it's good to, to be able to play on them if you go to Ultraflex or something like that, like I said. But most of us, even myself, don't have access to the machines. So I don't think they're a novelty now and again. Most time it's I'm training at NRG, which is a, a commercial gym. So I'm still limited. And we, we can still make an amazing session if we follow a framework like this, because we're trying to hit every movement pattern twice a week and stimulate everything and make sure we're pushing the muscles as hard as we can. Taking sets to failure wherever we can. In my opinion, all work and sets should be taken to failure and just pushed hard. Yes, if you're on your own, you can't go as hard as when you're with a partner. It's not safe and you're not able to just because you haven't got that assistance there. But you can still have a great workout and still push as hard as possible to, to still see progress. And even at my point, so I'm saying this is 19 years in, we're still making great progress. And I'm still hitting a ba pretty basic session done well. And we can go super complicated or we can, we can still be super basic, but ultimately we have to do it well. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what's on that piece of paper, you're not going to get results, which is what I see with most people. They, they go into a calorie surplus, then they come into a deficit, and like they've got all the all the, the, the structure there, it's just not put together properly. And with a bit of adjustment, they're in the gym five days a week, I've seen them like two, three years in, because I've been working at these commercial gyms, and the physique, physique's never changed. And most of us are aiming to improve, right? <laughs> not just go a little bit softer in the winter and a bit leaner in the summer. We want to ideally get to each summer, and we've got a better, a better physique as we get leaner, better physique. And we want to see progress over time which is why most of us are here in the first place. But a lot of guys don't see that. And like I said, this is the stuff that often is stopping them. It's the fucking training, which is the bo most boring part. It's the shit answer. Like I said, you're all confused in the front of those slides because there's no yes, no, right, wrong. There's just loads of gray in between because they all, they all work, they all have their place. But if you remember, they have to perform well. Good execution, good intensity. These are two main things. The rest, isn't that important? Isn't that as important as those two? Because like I said, everything works when done well. All these structures work. And the only difference if any of these structures, like I said, push, pull, legs, upper, lower, or push, pull, legs, push, pull, leg, they're kind of just hitting everything evenly. So if you did want to specialize, you, you just swap some of the volume. So like I said, you could go push, 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 if you just wanted to improve like your chest and shoulders, and then work everything else around that. So. As I know, I've, I've kind of talked there for a monologue for 36 minutes, so I do apologise. Uh, has anyone got any questions about any of this stuff? Because I know there's a lot of information to throw at you there. But if you've got any questions, fire away, guys, because obviously this is stuff that I don't see anyone ever explaining, and it's stuff that so many people struggle with. So how to program your damn training. Like, if you ever, if you ever hit any problems in your own training, please ask the questions now. Eh? Even something that you might think would be silly, because it's probably not only helpful to you, but helpful to everyone else as well. Jake, have you got any questions? I mean, how, how are you programming your training these days since obviously we stopped working together last year, didn't we? Uh, for the last, I don't know, for the last six months, I've been, I've been on a, 
What's it? A pull, push, legs, shoulders, arms, back and chest, legs, session. Some sometimes only hitting legs once a week because I don't know. I feel like they take a lot longer to recover than any other part of my body. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been on mainly for the last six, seven months, and going. I don't know, like all, all the working sets I've been going to failure on machines I can. If it's with dumbbells, like on a dumbbell press, it's easy to go to failure on them. You can just drop them. Then like Smith machine incline I've been going with. So I can set the I can set the stops, basically go to failure. I don't know, I've just I've I found that going to going to like proper failure with everything's been that's that's been like my main change. And and higher higher rep range with with certain certain like the accessories. Mm. I'm going higher rep range with like leg extension, lat raise, like bicep and tricep push down. And I found higher rep ranges is working a bit better. Well, yeah, and it's something we have to see. Like these little muscles, you can absolutely yeah. beat them to death, and it's like, oh my god, my shoulder's dead, but I'm not. So I can I can do loads mm. of side laterals. I mean, it's not that exciting, but still, if you want big shoulders, ultimately you're gonna do loads of this in different ways. Mm. So it's using the cuffs. Oh, do my cuffs in? My cuffs work. So the cuffs, the wrist cuffs on the cable are the best, by far the best one. Just the way the resistance work. You know, we're hitting that delt and it's really controlling it. But then yeah. I just went to two. If that's a body part, like I'm trying to bring it up, my arms and shoulders. Who doesn't want bigger arms and shoulders as a guy? We all, we all want to look at how good it is, with that top on, it's tight on the sleeve. Everyone wants that. I think that's yeah. fair to say. So I've been trying to bring up those more. And it's just adding extra volume, but I can I can do a pulse session and add an, an exercise for biceps at the end. And it doesn't really make much difference because I'd be resting between tricep extensions. I can jump on and do some biceps. Mm. And then same, if I, if I do a, uh, a pulse session, I do biceps at the end, I can do a tricep exercise. And then it's, um, I can do rear delts and side delts in, in two, two extra sessions as well. And you just don't really notice much of a difference. Now, if I was to add like hack squats in, and I'm working, mm. you know, and we, Pete, we've done some killer sessions on the Wednesdays, like we put hack squats or leg press in, that makes a big difference compared to leg extension. So, leg extension, sometimes we've all, as there was one session, we were all just dead. And it's like, let's just go to town on leg extensions, and then we're all just going to go home. Because then we're all just dead. And, and sometimes you have to do that and think, okay, I'm actually exhausted today. I still want to hit the muscle hard. But I don't want to exhaust myself further than it hinders the rest of my sessions or the rest of my week or work and recovering from it as well. So sometimes it's like, okay, can I just do loads of, if it was triceps, loads of extensions. If it's legs, can I do loads of leg extensions, leg curls, just to try and stimulate the muscle at least without destroying our body in the process. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of this as well. But well, Morgan, are you still training at home or are you training in a gym now as well? No, I've gone back. It's a split. Home was getting hectic because I work here and everything, and there's no release. So by the time I've got in the car and gone to the gym, um, it's 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 like, you know, that's more my time. Kids are old enough now; they want to come out and mess around, and I kind of don't um, want to put them off that either because it's good. But um, just this year, though, what I've been guilty of is I've always trained for sport and stuff and performance rather than physique or that. But this year. I think I, I uh, had a few things last year. I was going fine. I had a nice mix and I kind of had to get uh, a lump taken out that turned out to be worse than it was. But everything's fine, thank God. But um, I kind of didn't get back into the swing of things. And this year, I've kind of been guilty of program hopping when really mm. after listening to what you said, I should have just trusted myself and on that way because I wouldn't have... Um, I maybe went too many upsets, too many. I discovered the the Dorian Yates kind of thing this year. Mm. I did that too much. I just fried myself. So I'm kind of looking forward to a more sensible start now. Kind of what you said would have been how I would have trained before was a bit more intuitive and not so strict. But I don't know what changed this year. Um, but I, I've started enjoying it again, which is 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 more important. But like you said there, if if I'm tired and I don't want to go anywhere, I won't even go out to the home gym. I'll just do some bodyweight stuff in front of the TV in the kitchen. 
or so I've got like slant boards and stuff just to kind of help with my knees and stuff. So I can do a really good tough leg workout with using blood flow restriction and kind of tempo mm. and like kettlebells and stuff. Um, and you know, just feel amazing after it. But one thing I, that I only started doing that the last half of this year, but my knees and joints have been much better for it. Well, doing the training like that. Yeah, just kind of sometimes it's just once every couple of weeks, it's just I don't need to be lifting heavy weights. I just need to focus on movement and stuff like that. And it's just, it's kind of been regenerative if, if I'm feeling low and tired. I suppose my biggest challenge this year is I'm going to have to turn into a morning guy. So I'm going to have to get up and uh, <laughs> early in the morning. Yeah. It's a fair amount. I you could do. Mornings are great. I don't even know what time it is. Yeah. I don't even know what time it is at the moment. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but I, do you know what? I prefer to morning. So I, I actually love to train in the morning in some way. Because what I think yeah. all of us have said, if you train in the morning, first thing, you actually feel great for the day. Because you've done what? You've got your body moving. It doesn't even matter what you do. Whether it's cardio, steps, walking, stretching, anything. Just, you just use your body first thing in the morning. And as you said, Morgan, it's like it's the only time I get for me. <laughs> for a lot of us, it is. Like Pete's got two housemates that are like children. <laughs> most of the time <laughs> you're lucky they're not in <laughs> sorry guys but yeah it's, we've all got st stresses and think wow this is my only time of peace I'm going to go and put my headphones on and just shut the world out for, for an hour or so and yeah so, you know, if, if that's like your sacred time and it's getting disrupted by kids or beat you've said it now, I'm being stressed by work I'm like just it's the only time I've got just fuck off the, and sometimes you have to be the best thing I did the best thing I did start working out in the mornings is great once you get the yeah. hang of getting out of bed, then you, you just get in the routine and there's no excuse then. You just get, get out of bed. All you're, doing, all you're doing is giving yourself one hour less sleep. It's fine. Awesome. No, this is going to be... Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to be from tomorrow, like five o'clock. But it's fine. It's just we had a massive shock with trying to swap my son's uh, play school and stuff around. And um, I don't start work till 10. I normally finish at six. Right. So uh, I used to have that hour to myself. And even if I just walked the dog in that hour or something with something that just sets you up so much better for the day but um yeah it's gonna be an interesting one in the morning my cardio is fine because uh like i can go out and do like a steady stay on the the exercise bike or whatever but i think i'm just gonna have to just appreciate it's not gonna be perfect and if i've got half an hour i can do and even if it's like an on the minute every minute for half an hour just do that to whatever but i mean i used to do that to fit stuff in before I don't, I don't know what changed this year it was just like i was ocd about it so yeah, it could just be a um time. but the last half of the year then i just got enjoying it it was don't forget I mean, when we jumped on the call talking about your training it was about two years ago you were training at home in a small space yeah and just sometimes that space can get stale you know we've seen that when we're training certain gyms yeah. sometimes it can get a bit stale but I mean, I think that the last point there is obviously the, the different training styles that you said as well with blood flow restriction. So guys, if you never, if you don't know what blood flow restriction is, if you go on my YouTube, there's a video of me being put through a session and it was the most horrific thing I've ever done. Like <laughs> when done properly, because you can, so basically you restrict, so you put it on here, you restrict the blood flow coming out of the muscle, but it still allows it going in. So you put like a strap around here and then you end up being able to, as you're then training, your biceps, tricep ideally together. So you're doing one exercise and going back and forth just forcing so much blood in there and it causes a different form of muscle hypertrophy just through forcing the blood in there and causing uh, instead of heavy loading we've got like the it's called sarcoplasmic i even forget the term myself which makes it sound really unprofessional but it's just forcing blood in there and it causes so much trauma but it's a different way so as you said morgan you, you use these in lighter weights so if your joints are getting beat up that's a really good way to let them heal at the very least because when i did the stuff with as you see on my YouTube video, we went really hard. I was like, I, my, my joints feel fine though. Joints feel great. And the, the pain was so, I couldn't even get back into the leg extension. So just like seat leg extension to get your leg up onto the pad. It's like, I can't move my legs. <laughs> and it, it was crazy because you had like the, the pain that you would get at the end of a hard working set. You got that and then it just stayed for half an hour, an hour. And you, like, you couldn't move and it, the pain was excruciating. But then you took them off and went, oh my God, I feel okay. And then the next day I wasn't even really sore. 
but then you will see progress over time. So it was, it was a really interesting form of training. I think it was made in Japan or yeah. something like that. That's then come across. Uh, it was called capsule training for a bit, and then it's flipped all restriction. So it's, it's just interesting to try these different things. Obviously, when you're trying different training styles, you know, some people might go, oh, my God, that was horrendous. Someone else goes, I love that. <laughs> Let's do that again. And it's, it's finding... Yeah, you, you do kind of, if you're prone to it, you do feel a bit green doing it more, a lot lot quicker, that kind of find the lactic. Build, or it, I don't even know if it's lactic is the correct term, but it builds up much quicker. But if you work on your tempo doing it, which is hard because uh, you will do high reps, but if you work on the tempo like that when you're doing it, just for me anyway, it's just the worst. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it, and it is a mental challenge as well, but you feel amazing after it, like yeah. physically. I do think, I think it was injury, injury rehab that they found it and then they just brought it into everyday athletes. Because yeah, they're going a lot less weight. But, you know, I mean, we're not selling the idea to people and saying it's excruciating. But, guys, it's actually, it's, I mean, it's good fun to try these different styles at times. Because sometimes, like I said, Morgan's, you know, rushing. I've had to even rush. You know, you think, oh, you, you work online, Chris. How do you rush to, to training? Sometimes you just got to work. It's just life, unfortunately. And it's like, I'm, all, I'm, I'm essentially supposed to be on holiday now. So I'm still working. You know, and sometimes <laughs> life, life, life's like this. And we still have to do things that is just what's required. And sometimes we, our training does then mean that, well, I'd like an hour and a half. By the time I get to the gym, oh, fuck, I've only got an hour or 50 minutes. Like, what am I going to do? Yeah, I'm going to shorten the rest periods down. I'm going to try and make it intense, follow that framework, do any intensifiers we can, like drop sets and supersets, to start putting all these things in, which make it a bit more complicated, but we can move a bit faster and start to get a great workout. And then even if we've got half an hour, we can try and get as much in that half an hour as physically possible. And you won't, you won't rest as long as you would do if you got to an hour and a half. But then that's the whole point. You're trying to just maximize half an hour because it's all you've got. And sometimes... You've got to work with that, especially if it's in the morning. Maybe you did miss your alarm or something's happened. All these things. So, guys, I'm going to finish it there for today. Then, obviously, it's Sunday evening where, where you are, and it's all it was seven o'clock, so it's nearly eight o'clock. So, it's getting a little bit late for you guys. So, I don't want you being away from chill time, family and friends, and stuff like that. So, hopefully, that's give you a little bit more of an explanation onto training and different aspects of training. And from here, you're able to just understand, like, even if it's me programming for one of you guys, you understand why I've done it a bit more. Because you know, when I look through another coach's work, I'm like, I can see why they've done that. And I'm like, no, that one I don't understand. So I ask the question, how come you've done that like that? Because there must be a reason. There should be a reason. And then it's the same with you guys. There should be a reason for each part of it. And then we've covered all the different reasons why today. So thank you, gentlemen, for joining me, as always. We've got two more calls Cheers. left. Cheers. Two more calls left. We've got tomorrow at 6 uh, and Tuesday at 6. And then we're going to decide what to do from there and out. But... Thank you so much for, for your input so far and your attendance so far, guys. It's really appreciated. Hopefully, we can get this video out to more people as well so they can watch the slides and they can, they can obviously take some, some value. Yeah. Feels really cool. Oh, um, Tuesday, I might not make it Tuesday. There's just appointments and things in the evening, so I might not. Uh, might be rushing from one thing to the other. I've got to go up to the city, get back down, and then with dentists in the evening. So <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I don't make it at all, uh, apologies in advance. That's okay. Well, if you, get, if you can't ever make it, guys, obviously the, the recordings are going to Google Drive every time. So watch back over it. And then and you can always, if you know, if you are watching it back, you can always ask me questions as well. It's a big part. You can always just drop me a DM and say, oh, I'm just going to ask about this. So, yeah, I don't mind. Obviously, you guys will be part of this plant as well, this program. You've got open access for, for the five days to ask me any questions and utilize this time, especially after we've got off the call and you're thinking about stuff. Put it into practice. Don't just let it go in the back of your brain and then do nothing with it. Start using it. Guys, good evening. Uh, oh, cheers, Chris. Perfect. Uh, see you later, Chris. See you later. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.